more dangerous than the actual tank is the fear that it generates. Today, we're following an entry from this fantastic memoir written by Heinrich Hoppe, a German surgeon who served with the 6th Infantry Division on the Eastern Front. It's one of my favorite first-hand accounts. In addition to rare film footage, I'll use an OKW situational map to give context to his story. A heartfelt thanks goes out to Naomi Ortega and Union Capital for sponsoring the production of this video. Depending on your response, it will likely turn into a new series, so let me know what you think. If you're interested in buying the book, the pinned link in the comment section will get you to it. In the afternoon of October 27th, at 145, I lay with Heinrich in a hollow 300 yards from the Russian positions while their machine gun fire passed harmlessly overhead. 14 Stukas, in steady formation, approached the Russian lines and immediately, over our heads, peeled off into their attack. They dived vertically, screaming as they came. Everyone seemed to have chosen me as their target for its bombs. In spite of my confidence in our pilots, I pressed myself into the ground. Miraculously, it seemed they pulled out of their dives and their bombs pounded accurately into the Russian positions. Beams, mud, sods of earth, machine guns and men were flung high into the air. The earth trembled. Fascinated, we stood up and watched the spectacle. The enemy anti-aircraft fire now came only sporadically from one or two Russian guns. We launched our attack as the Stukas came in again, this time at ground level with machine guns blazing. We stormed into the Russian defenses and whoever did not surrender was shot down at close quarters. By five o'clock, Mochki was in our hands. An hour later, all our wounded had been treated and the dead buried. At 7.30 p.m., we received divisional orders to clear Mochki and return immediately to our original positions. Rumors flew round the battalion. Why, after winning the valuable ground, had we retired? Were we to dig in here for the winter? Had the attack of the 3rd Panzer Group at Torzhok bogged down in the mud? Was this to be the limit of our advance before swinging eastwards to attack Moscow? Or had General Aulab got cold feet. All that we knew with any certainty was that our heavy formations and supplies were hopelessly bogged down somewhere behind us and that it was still raining. This is the original war atlas for the German High Command for Operation Barbarossa. We are looking at the situational map for October 24th, 1941, a few days before Hoppe wrote his entry. This is a good time for me to thank my Patreon supporters. They get regular access to exclusive footage that can't be shown here. 
go to military1945.com and open a free account to see an example of the footage. You won't be sorry, I promise. The division was being led by Lieutenant General Helge Auleb. The 6th Infantry Division in the 6th Army Corps was part of the German 9th Army. Also in the Army Corps at the time were the 26th and 110th Infantry Divisions. But it wasn't the increased difficulty of being resupplied, positioned on the Volga, or the changing weather which made Lieutenant General Auleb call for the pullback. The T-34 was the main reason. Auleb had also decided that we had thrust too far forward and were exposing our flanks, but it was the T-34 that had caused our first withdrawal. This new type of Russian tank had broken through our neighboring division's lines and we had nothing heavy enough to combat it. A mighty juggernaut, the T-34 was said to be protected with impenetrable armor, and early reports made it out to be invincible. Tales of the T-34's exploits raced along the front like wildfire. Our 37mm anti-tank guns were useless against it, and were now nicknamed the Panzer Tappers. A brave and determined detachment equipped with 37s had struck a T-34 more than 40 times, but the monstrosity had not even wavered in its course and had calmly lumbered up to our guns, driven over them and flattened them. Only our Panzer IV with its 75 millimeter gun could successfully oppose the T-34s at this stage. unless they came within range of our assault batteries or our 88 millimeter flak. Our battalion officers acknowledged the fact that we were defenseless against this terrifying new weapon, but immediately set about trying to develop some new counter to it. Platoon commanders experimented with the preparation of concentrated explosives. The heavy tea mine was tied together with one or more hand grenades and covered in sacking in such a way that the fuse cap of the grenade was exposed. Anti-tank combat squads were formed whose job was to rush towards the T-34 and hurl the homemade bomb in its path. It was a near suicidal remedy and many of our men were to lose their lives applying it. The normal pressure fuse was also used. The weight of the tank would touch off the explosive. Some were blown up together with their weapon and the enemy tank. But on the other hand, many T-34s were successfully destroyed. And what was more important, the battalion's infantrymen regained self-confidence when they saw the monster that could be combated with a fair measure of success. The really effective 75mm anti-tank guns only came into service nine months later. If you like this kind of material, I suggest that you look at the website barbarossa1941.com. It's got an archive of photographs that's outstanding and a comprehensive documents and maps archive. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.